Hello everyone, welcome to another ranking video. Today I'm going to be doing a re-ranking of the Star Wars films. I haven't done this in a while. Uh, last time I ranked the Star Wars movies uh, was almost three years ago, and that was when The Last Jedi had just come out. So there's been the Solo movie since then, there's also been uh, The Rise of Skywalker. So two big movies, and also, you know, The Mandalorian came out, but, you know, that's not going to be a part of this. Um... I actually have been watching uh, Clone Wars um, after Disney Plus came out initially. I was trying to watch a lot of Clone Wars just to get, you know, ready for the final seasons or whatever. But I don't know. I watched the first three seasons. I wasn't really loving it. Um, but I did see the Clone Wars movie, so I will sort of include that in this ranking. So this is going to be 12 movies ranked. Um, but one day I will give Clone Wars another chance because, you know, apparently the way the last season ended was really awesome. And they're also doing, like, another show, uh, The Bad Batch, which should be cool. Um, and I'm excited for Mandalorian Season 2, of course, because that show is great. But anyways, uh, I'm strictly doing a ranking of the movies here, and since I've seen the Clone Wars movie finally, I will talk about that. Now, coming in at 12th place is going to be the Clone Wars movie. Um, I don't have a uh, actual physical copy, but... Um, yes, a lot of people would agree. It is not really a good movie. Um, it's okay. It's not terrible, you know? Now, my last place for just the live action stuff is Attack of the Clones. That hasn't changed, um, from the last ranking. Um, the only reason I would put Attack of the Clones above, you know, the Clone Wars movie is that Attack of the Clones at least is live action, and it has a couple good things in it that I kind of like, you know? Um... And, you know, it's part of, it's a, you know, it's literally one of the episodes, so, you know, um, I don't know. Attack of the Clones is not good at all, though, but I'll just say that. Um, but the Clone Wars movie, it was okay, I don't know, I definitely wouldn't see myself watching it ever again, unless I'm, you know, trying to watch the entirety of Clone Wars, um, yeah, I don't know, guys. It was okay, I mean, I, I don't really know if there's a lot of fans of that that would you know, rank it pretty high or anything. But, um, anyways, let's get into it. So, um, coming into 11th place, like I said, is Attack of the Clones. This movie sucks. It's terrible. Um, oh God, this movie's terrible. The romance between Anakin and Padme does not work. Everything looks terribly fake. The CGI is horrendous. Um, Count Dooku's cool. Um, Yoda's cool. Obi-Wan's cool. Jango Fett's cool, sort of. That's about it. Um, I hate this movie. Anyways, <laughs> coming in next is going to be Phantom Menace. Now, a lot of people hate Phantom Menace. Um, I've mentioned before, I'm pretty sure this is the first Star Wars movie I ever saw because um, this came out in 99. I was born in 96, and I had the VHS tape, and I don't recall seeing the originals before seeing this. So, yeah, um, I have a lot of nostalgia for this movie, and it's not totally terrible. You know, like I said, Attack of the Clones, everything looks totally fake. The CGI is horrendous. Whereas in this, this is a 90s movie, technically, so there's some practicality in it. You know, there's some practical, you know, effects and sets and whatnot. Um, I mean, there is a lot of, like, bad CGI, especially on Jar Jar Binks. Of course, Jar Jar Binks being a negative, you know, in general. But, um, I don't know. I can watch this movie and enjoy it, even though it's not good. Um, it's sort of a guilty pleasure, I guess. You know, young Anakin, um, uh, not really the best either. Jake Lloyd. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't totally hate this movie like everybody does, but, you know, it's, it's ranked pretty low for me. Um, yeah. But anyways, that's, uh, Phantom Menace. Now, coming in the next, uh, I think that was, that was 10th place, right? So this is 9th place. Okay. Coming up next is going to be the Han Solo movie. Now, I actually really do like this movie. Um, I know I have it ranked kind of low, but, you know, I just consider everything else to be better. Um, but I really do like this movie. A lot of people don't like it. I watched it, and I had a lot of fun with it. I think this is a fun little adventure science fiction movie. A nice little prequel for Han Solo. Nothing spectacular, but I, I don't know. I thought um, Alden Ehrenreich, I think that's how you say his name, he was really good as young Han Solo. And uh, I thought Woody Harrelson was a great sort of uh, secondary character. Um, I don't know. I really I really did enjoy this. I liked Amelia Clark. I liked Donald Glover as a young Lando. Chewbacca was awesome, of course. Um, I really, I don't know. I really enjoyed it. I mean, I don't watch this all the time or anything, but I'll watch it once in a while and have fun with it. Um, I thought this movie got a lot of unnecessary hate. I mean, it didn't really need to be made, but I thought it was a cool little nifty movie. I don't know. Yeah, Solo. Um, anyways, coming in at ninth place, um, how did I have this? I think, yeah. 
Okay, so this is probably my biggest change from the last ranking. I have The Last Jedi um, in ninth place. All right, I'm already losing count. I apologize. 12 was the Clone Wars movie. 11 was Attack of the Clones. 10 was Phantom Menace. Oh, 9 was Han Solo. So this is 8. Episode 8 is going to be my 8th place. Okay. Um, yeah, when I initially first saw this movie, I thought it was fantastic. But now, obviously, of course, you know, everybody <laughs> either loves or hates this movie. I think it's more on the hate side, actually. Um, this still, to this day, is the most polarizing movie of all time, at least from what I can tell. Um, Rise of Skywalker also had some polarizing reviews and whatnot. Um, but the main thing for me, rewatching this movie over the past almost three years now, um, this movie, nothing really happens, okay? Yes, big things happen, like Snoke getting killed, um, Kylo Ren taking over the First Order, the death of Luke Skywalker, and that's it. Nothing happens in this movie. This is like the strangest middle act of a trilogy ever. Now, I love Ryan Johnson as a director. Knives Out was great. Um, his Breaking Bad episodes were great. But this movie is weird. Like, nothing happens in it. And this movie, to me, feels like the smallest Star Wars movie in comparison to all the other ones. Like, these other... The other movies all feel like these big universes. You know, you go to different planets, different locations. There's different planets and locations in this movie. But it's such a weird, grounded movie with only, like two or three subplots going on, whereas all the other movies had a lot of things going on. Even the Han Solo movie has more going on than this, I feel like. Um, yeah, I don't know. This movie's strange. Uh, not much happens. Like, I don't know. And, you know, I'm not uh, totally hating the fact that Luke Skywalker was sort of narcissistic and whatnot and sort of, you know, sort of an antagonist in the movie. Um, a lot of people didn't like how Luke was portrayed in this. I really never had a problem with that. I know that's sort of a hot take. Um, but this movie's weird. Like, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I love the way it's shot. I love the look of it, everything. It looks beautiful in 4K. I love the dynamic with Ray and Kylo Ren, their force powers, you know. The, uh, the scene, um, it's on the back. Yeah, this scene is amazing. I totally love it still. It's definitely the best part of the movie. The theater clapped at that part and was making noise. I remember that. Um, I don't hate Rose, you know. But this movie is just weird. You know, it's it's very strange. Oh, the scene with Luke and Leia at the end, I love that scene too. That scene and this scene are two of my all-time favorite Star Wars scenes. I will just say that. Um, I love Kylo Ren's arc in this. Kylo Ren's my favorite character in the new trilogy, by the way. Um, I don't know. This movie is strange. Uh, I can't really explain it. I mean, I sort of did, but... Do you get it? You, I'm, everybody hates this anyway, so you get it. I don't hate this movie. It's just weird, okay? Um, so there you go. Coming in at seventh place is actually going to be Rise of Skywalker. Now, um, I actually really do like this movie, but it is also sort of strange into, like, there's 5,000 things going on in the movie, and they sort of tried to, you know, J.J. Abrams tried to sort of undo things that were done in The Last Jedi, um... Which I totally, you know, I don't disagree with either movie, whatever. Um, I can accept it, but um, I don't know. This movie was kind of strange with Palpatine and all that. Um, but what I love about this movie, I've said this many times, you got to see Ray, Finn, and Poe act as a trio, and they all had scenes together, and it was awesome. I love the first, like, third of the movie where they're all together and they're going to look for all these things and whatnot. Kylo Ren, you know, the scene with him and Harrison Ford, Han Solo, beautiful. I totally love that. He His character was totally, like, redeemed for me at that point. Um, Lando was kind of in, just in there. He didn't really do much. I don't know. Um, yeah, I don't know. I really like this movie, and um, it's just sort of strange, like The Last Jedi in a way. Um, but I do like it, and it's a, it's a, a good ending, you know, where, you know, they go to Tatooine and all that stuff, um, yeah, I don't know, it's kind of, uh, eh, <laughs> I don't know, I, I like it, but I, I don't really know how to explain it, anyways, um, coming up next, uh, let me think, uh, do I like Rogue One more than episode three, um, yeah, I'll say I do, okay, so coming up next is actually gonna be episode three, so, yes, um, episode three, Revenge of the Sith, this is the most memeable movie of all time, but uh, upon rewatching this, um, 
I say this movie is actually pretty damn good, um, especially compared to the first two episodes. Revenge of the Sith, Revenge of the Sith is um, pretty good. Um, a lot of bad CGI in it still, but, you know, this movie... George Lucas got his, got his shit together when he got around to the third movie. Um, the score's epic. The dynamic with Anakin and Obi-Wan at the end is really good, and Palpatine's awesome in it. Um, but, you know, it sort of has that prequel problem where it's, like, kind of a messy movie, and, uh, you know. Hayden Christensen, I don't totally hate him in this. I thought he did a good job in this for the most part. Um, yeah, I don't know. You got the infamous, you know, Darth Vader saying no at the end, which everybody hates, but I totally don't hate that. It's whatever. Um, yeah, I like Revenge of the Sith now. Um, quite a bit, actually. I was like, wow, this is actually a pretty good movie when I rewatched it. I actually have it ranked kind of high now in comparison to my old one, my old ranking. Um, but yeah, Revenge of the Sith. All right, coming up next is going to be Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Now, I love this movie still. Um, I used to have it a little higher, I think, above Force Awakens, but I really do love this now. Um, I really think it's a cool sort of uh, way to capture the original films. Like, it really feels like one of the original movies in terms of, like, the look of it and everything. Um, Mandalorian's also achieving that, by the way. Um, this movie's awesome. There's There's a lot of, you know, a lot of great characters in it. They don't have much character development per se like Jen Urso and um I can't even remember uh his name he's getting a Disney plus series and I can't even remember his name but um it'll come to me any minute now I'm, I'm totally blanking um Cassie and Andor there you go <laughs> there's a lot of great characters in this and you know of course Donnie Yen he's one of them um yeah I don't know they don't really get much development but the entire third act of this movie is fantastic when they go to uh Scarif, right? Um, the beach planet. I love all that stuff and everything involving getting the Death Star plans and I don't know. And the dynamic with the Jen and her father was pretty good, I guess. Um, I just pointed to somebody, but he's, he's not even on this on this list of pictures here. Anyways, um, Forrest Whitaker was kind of weird in the movie. He was just kind of in there. I don't know. But I do love, uh, uh, God, I'm blanking on everybody's name right now. Um, he was the villain in, uh, well, he's not a villain in Captain Marvel, but uh, he was sort of the villain at first, but not really. Uh, ben Mendelsohn, there you go. I love his character in this. He's like, <laughs> everything goes wrong for him, and he doesn't get the credit for what he achieves. It's so funny. Um, deploy the garrison. Um, yeah, I love this movie. It's really good. It, it is a spectacular-looking thrill ride. That's the best way to describe it. Um, yeah, I don't know. Rogue One, I, I really like it. All right, coming in next is going to be Force Awakens. Now, this movie definitely holds up for me. Um, if you can look past the you know, comparisons to the original Star Wars. There's a lot of similarities. But what this movie has above the other two, you know, sequels, um, Harrison Ford as Han Solo for the majority of the movie was a really good, strong point for me. And the dynamic with him and Kylo Ren was really well done. And this was a great reintroduction to Star Wars. Like, I think back to 2015 when me and my friend Rob went to see this, and I think it still holds up. I mean... Like I said, a lot of people poke, poke fun at the fact that it's a uh, New Hope sort of ripoff, but I thought J.J. Abrams did a great job with it, and I don't know. There's a lot of cool stuff in it. Um, I really don't have much else to say. The weakest point for me, though, is the uh, Star Killer base thing. I mean, they couldn't have thought of anything else. Like, that's, you know, that's the one a New Hope comparison I can get behind. Like, it's way too similar to the Death Star. Um, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, this movie is still pretty good. I, I like it. Um, I love the reveal at the end that Rey is the Jedi, not really, you know, not Finn. I mean, Finn's cool, but, you know, um, when she, you know, gets the lightsaber out of the snow, that moment is great. Um, yeah, I don't know. Um, I really like it. Anyways, Force Awakens. Um, I think I had that kind of low last time. All right, now, coming in at third place, obviously, is going to be the original trilogy, um, Return of the Jedi. Let me get to it. Yes, I actually really love Return of the Jedi, like, really do. This is my favorite Luke, um, out of all the iterations, and Luke is my favorite Star Wars character, too. Um, but he is so cool in this movie, because he's finally become sort of a Jedi Master, you know, and he's got the green lightsaber, um, which I prefer, you know, and I love the opening with Jabba's Palace and all that, and I don't hate the Ewoks like everybody else does, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, everyone complains that Harrison Ford just guarded a door for the whole movie. That's kind of true. Um, I get it. Whatever. Um, this movie's fun. I love it. Um, I think it's a great conclusion. I thought, I still to this day think this should have been the ending, but it's okay. Whatever. 
Um, yeah, and then of course you got Palpatine in there, um, being evil, which is great, and this is a fantastic movie. Like, it's totally fun, and, you know, it's the weakest of the trilogy, but it is still great. Um, anyways, coming into second place is gonna be the original Star Wars. Um, I can watch this movie anytime. It's a perfect movie. It's, it's amazing. It's iconic. Everything about it's great. I have no complaints. Um, A New Hope is fantastic. And this is easily my re most rewatched Star Wars movie. It goes by so quick. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's uh, uh, that's A New Hope, Episode 4. Now, uh, number one is going to be Empire Strikes Back, of course. Um, yeah, this movie changed everything. It's, um, you know, when something happens in a film series, they always refer to it as, oh, that's the Empire Strikes Back of that series. That's because Empire Strikes Back was the first sort of jaw-dropping middle act of a trilogy like that ever happened you know um yeah i am your father you know that that alone is uh you know um <laughs> this movie is amazing i mean it, it's really um spectacular it's perfect it's it's awesome um everything in it is great i mean it's the beginning scene with hoth um then going to dagobah to find yoda and you know cloud city everything lando's betrayal um I don't know. This this is a amazing film. Like, you know, Infinity War, for example, the snap. That's the Empire Strikes Back of the MCU. Um This is where the bad guys win, you know. It's uh it's a really cool thing that a lot of film series have replicated. And um I don't know. It's just it's just a great movie. Um I really don't know how to explain it. But uh, Empire Strikes Back, yes, it's the best Star Wars movie. It always will be, I think. Um And that's it. That's all I gotta say. So anyways. Thanks for watching, guys. I've been talking for a long time now. And uh, if you agree with my ranking or disagree, let me know. And how do you rank these movies? Um, yeah, and that's about it, guys. Thanks for watching, and have a good one. Bye-bye.